I'm very happy to be here with you. And this teachings I want to say they came from God to me. It changed my life. It made me enjoy God. And to be motivated by God. And all, all these teachings came through you know, my daily life also that I have applied this in my daily life. Okay, now the first session is about how to live in God's love and to be motivated by God's love. Now, um, let me ask you, when you grow up, when you grow up, do people sometimes say, oh, you're not, not so good and someone else is better than you? You don't do the schoolwork so well, you're not worthy. Someone is smarter than you. Have you heard words like that from people? Now feel free to respond to me. So has it happened to you? Yes. Yes. Okay. Now, because basically this is a society of the law. That means if you do well, people will like you. When you don't do so well, people might not like you. And it's very easy for people to compare you with some other, someone else, your brother, sister, or your cousin. So, does that make you feel good? Or does it make you feel unworthy? Now, but you know, when we know about Jesus Christ, when we've heard about Jesus Christ, Jesus, the Bible tells us that God loved all of us. Now, we should live in the love of God, right? But very often people will say this to you. You don't do so well as a pastor or a leader. I don't I like some other pastor than you. Yes. And more than I like some other pastor more than you. And then it's very easy for Christians to hear people say this, you don't pray enough. You don't work hard enough. So you're not doing so well. So in the in the body of Jesus Christ, we should have the grace of God that motivates us. But very often people still say, I need to do better to be accepted by the people. And we, people might say, people don't like me. And what I want to say is, very often people put the law into the church. Let me ask you, how many of you are pastors here? How many are pastors? How many are pastors? Okay. How many are leaders? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, let me ask you. Do you serve God because we say, if I don't serve God, God doesn't like me. Do you serve God like this? And then if you keep saying, well, I have to work harder. If not, God doesn't like me. Do you serve God because of that? Or do you serve God because you say, God loves me. I want to please God. And God loves me and cares about me. 
Let me ask you, what is a better motivation? Then you say, I have to work hard, I have to serve God harder. Or do you say, God's love is so great. He, obey, he motivates me to obey God. And I'm motivated by the love of God to care about the people out there. Let me ask you, which is a better motivation? Which is a better motivation? The love of God? Or the law of God? Which is a better motivation? Can you answer? It says the love of God. Right. Now, it is God's love is a better motivation. But very often pastors will still say, Am I doing well enough? Do I preach well enough? Can I change the people? God might not like my ministry. Let me ask you, do you sometimes have this, this uh, law inside you saying you're not doing well enough? Do you sometimes have this saying, or your wife, your husband say to you, you don't do so well in ministry? And uh, sometimes even people will complain about your ministry. Do you sometimes feel like that? The pressure? The pressure to do better? And you find it hard to do better? Do you find this inside of you? No. We are supposed to live in the love of God. But, and, but many ministers would just say, I'm not good enough. Now, this is not God's way. This is the way of the world. Now, let me tell you, I'm motivated by the love of God. And I want to obey all the law. I want to obey everything the Bible tells me. And I can enjoy God all the time. And I enjoy ministering. Why? Because I'm motivated by the grace of God. But people have complained sometimes. People have a tendency to complain and give pressure. Do your people sometimes give you pressure? Now you can respond very freely. Okay, let this practice is good morning. Can you say good morning? Good morning. Good morning. Now, so get used to this. Or do, you, do you feel God loves you? Yeah. Yes. Okay, very good. Okay. Do you sometimes feel pressure from people? Do you sometimes feel pressure? Yeah. Yes. Do you like the pressure? Do you like the pressure? Uh, no. no, you don't like the pressure. Right? Uh, Let me tell you, I have been, people have given me pressure from time to time. <laughs> pressure makes us discouraged. Pressure makes us feel tired. So we don't want to live under pressure. 
Let me tell you, when I first became a pastor, there was one co-worker that kept complaining about me. And then I felt so bad. It gives me so much pressure. And I find that, wow, this is so hard because of the pressure and the people demanding a lot from me. And I find that I cannot do so well. But later I served in a different ministry. There was no pressure. And I really want to bless the people. I brought many people to Christ. I feel happier and happier. And later I experienced the Holy Spirit. When the evangelist Carlos and Antonio from Argentina went to Hong Kong. Hong Kong, Argentine, Hong Kong. And he laid hand on me. The moment he touched my head, I feel power like electricity. And I felt a great love of God enter me. And I said, I didn't know I could experience God's love like that. And later, every time I pray, I can feel the power of God. And I can feel the joy of the Lord every time I pray. Up to today, every time I think of God, joy will flow through me. And then I, I enjoy the relationship with God. And I enjoy serving God. It's totally different from the past. When people give me pressure. But now I'm motivated by the love of God. I can motivated by now, do you want to be motivated by the love of God? Yes, yes. Now, but many people say, the pressure of the people are too hard. Now, this morning, I'm going to go through some Bible verses. And I hope you would write this down. And remember it. Okay, Isaiah 49 verses, verse 15. Isaiah 49 verse 15. Isaiah, Arubaini na kenda, kumi na dano, baka kumi na sita. Can a mother forget the baby and her breast, and have no compassion on the child in she has born, though she may forget, I will not forget you. Yeah, Isaiah, makumi ine, makumi ine na kenda, kumi na dano, baka kumi na sita. Isaiah, Okay, now. Yeah, you. Can you read? Someone read? Anyone who found it? Yeah. Please read loudly. Je pense constamment à tes remparts. Tu m'as sommé que soyez-vous. 
Nasoma katika jina la Yesu. Amen. Yeye mwanamke aweza kusahau mtoto wake angeniaye hata asihumie mwana wa kiko lake. Naam. Hawa waweza kusahau. Lakini mimi sita kusahau wewe. Nazama nimekuchora katika vitanga vya mikono yangu. Kuta zako ziko mbele zangu daima. Amen. 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 Okay. Now I I don't see many mothers many women here. How many are mothers here? Si only one wana wake wa mama katika yetu. Wa mama wa mama katika yetu. How many are mothers here? Wa mama ni wangapi katika yetu? Okay. Let me ask you, have you forgotten your baby somewhere when you know you had your baby? In me kufikia kusahau mtoto wako mahali fulani? Did you say, did I leave my baby in a car or in a shop? Have you forgotten your baby somewhere? So the mothers can answer. Have you? Yes, to say that in a war time they were forgetting, they were forgetting their babies. Oh, in the war time? Yes, in the war time when they were running from fear of the war. Okay. And in the war time, has it happened to you? Ah, if you forget my language, I was muda, I was waka to wa vita. Kando na vita. Eh, kando na, yeah. Kando na vita, you forget my language. Kisha kutoka kwenye vita, you forget my language. Okay. Kisha vita, you forget my language. No, no, okay. So you will not forget your babies. Well, I was with that one to the walk. Have your your fathers here forgotten your babies somewhere? Left your baby in the shop? Una una wapa kama misa kwa kuto kwa ni kwa ni shop kwa ni soko. Have your fathers forgotten your baby and left and leave the baby in the shop? Ah, una misa kwa kuto kwa ni shop kwa na na wacha kuku. Has it happened? No. no. Okay. Here the Bible says God will not forget us all the any time he won't forget us. Uh, He's thinking about us all the time. Uh, we are in his heart. He think about you every moment. Can you tell the person next to you? God is thinking about you right now. So I say to God all the time. God is remembering me now. God is very happy that I came to Congo. God is very happy that you came this morning. Every single day. Does he forget about us sometimes? No. So every day we can say, God is thinking of me and He is loving me. Even when people don't like me, God still likes me. When I'm serving God, when I'm loving God with a pure heart, God is thinking of me and is very happy. So even when someone dislikes me, if I obey God and love God, he is happy with me. I don't have to worry about what people say about me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Thank 
people around us. Let me tell you, I'm 67 years old. Look at my muscle. <laughs> I am still strong. <laughs> Gives me strength. At 67, I can rest in Hong Kong, which is much more comfortable than here. Why do I go to different countries? Because I know God loves me. And God loves you. And God loves the people out there. God says, I want more people to come to me. I want people to enjoy my love. I want people to enjoy my love. So God says to his people, enjoy my love. So you're motivated by God's love. Not by the law. Say, I have to do it, I have to do it. But you say, God's love is so great. That I want to serve God. Okay, Psalm 139, verse 5. Psalm 139. So someone find it. Yeah. You have enforced me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. Okay, Psalm 139, verse 5. Okay, can someone read? Oh, oh, okay. Menisingara nyuma na mbele Ukaniwekea mkono wako Marifa hayo Ni ajabu Ya mishinda mimi Haya Tihiriki Siwezi kuyafikia Amen Amen so the Bible says that God is in front of us and behind us and is laying his hand upon us to bless us. Now you might say, how do I know God is with me all the time? Let me ask you, when we have sinned, what do you feel in your hearts? When we have sinned, do you feel the voice of the Holy Spirit telling us to repent? Do you feel the voice of God prompting us to repent? Do you feel that? How many of you, when you're about to sin, you feel this voice of the Holy Spirit prompting you not to sin? Can you raise your hand? Okay, very good. That is God working in us when we disobey Him. Yes. God is working in us when we disobey Him. Now, sometimes your children disobey you. You might say, go to Rome, I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to see you. But for God, it's not like that. God always says to us, God always says to us, I'm moving in your heart. I want to move you to follow me. Have you noticed when we disobey God, God doesn't leave us? Right? God came to seek us even when we sin. 
So God is with us even when we are sinning. If you notice when you were about to sin and then we feel the voice of the Holy Spirit that stop us sinning. And then when we praise God, do you feel God's with you? Do you feel peace and love? Uh, you praise God. When you praise God, oh hallelujah. So when we disobey God, God is with us. And when we obey Him, He is with us for. So God is with us all the time. Day and night. Now, let me say this to you. Do you know, I, I think you know, many Africans have been taken to America and some other countries to be slaves. Have you heard of this? Have you heard of it? Okay. So when a pastor say, come, can the slave say, I don't want to come now? No. no. Now even, I'm using an illustration, even the slave is in the toilet. And then the master say, come. The slave have to finish very quickly and rush out, right? Because if the slave is slow, the master will beat him. Let me ask you, is God our slave? Is God our slave? Is he our slave? No. no. But he comes to us all the time. Better than a slave. Uh, um, Even a slave would not be with the master all the time. Even a slave would not serve the master happily. The slave would say in the heart, Why is me serving you all the time? It's unfair. But God never says that. Let me ask you, how many times have we disobeyed God on the average? Have you obeyed God, disobeyed God once only? How many people have disobeyed God only once? Can you raise your hand? How many you have disobeyed God only 100 times? Can you uh, raise your hand? Uh, only 100 times. Uh, so? uh, How about 1,000 times? Uh, How many uh, disobeyed God 1,000 times? Uh, How about 10,000 times? Uh, only uh, uh, disobeyed God 10,000 times. We all have disobeyed God many, many times. Can you say it together? Say it together. Say it, tell them to say it. But God never forsakes us. Even when we sin, He's in front of us and behind us. And he's laying his head upon us to bless us. Amen. Now I hope you'll respond to God's love. I use an illustration of your wife and husband. When we say something unpleasant to the husband or wife, do they still come to be 
to you and be nice to you. Uh, Tell me, when you are that nice to your husband or wife, are they still nice to you? No. No. Why? Because they So they will say, I don't want to talk to you now. Ah, uh, But God, does God do that? I, they will move on and find a No. God continues to be with us even when we sin. Ah, move on and believe. Move on and see. After we are to find a dam. So after I experience the Holy Spirit, I don't want to sin anymore. I don't want to make God unhappy. I appreciate God's love so much. I hope you think about what I just tell you. We all have sinned against God so many times. But he's not like a husband or wife who would reject us when we. A husband or wife that would reject us when we are not pleasant to them. But God never does that. Let me ask you. When you think about the God, the love of God like that, do you feel touched? God is so wonderful. His love stays with us all the time. He loves me all the time. He cares about us all the time. He never forsakes us. So I hope you say, I'm loved by God. I'm loved by God all the time. I'm loved by God all the time. I'm loved by God all the time. Yes. Zephaniah 317. Zephaniah. Zephaniah. That's a minor prophet. Minor prophet Zephaniah. Thank you. Come in a sound. Yeah. The Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to save. He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Now let me tell you, this is the center of my teaching. The most important thing is to live in the love of God. Zephania 3:17 Tunasoma katika jina la Yesu Bwana Mungu wako yuko katikati yako Shujaa awezae kuokoa atakushangilia kwa furaha kuu atakutuliza katika upendo wake atakufurahia kwa kuimba Amen Amen Okay What is verse says that God takes great delight in you. Ah, uh, if 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 verse in asema, Mungu. God takes great delight in you. Ah, uh, Mungu Mungu ana 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 kwa fura mimi kwa ngo. He is very happy with us. Ah, uh, yeye na kwa fura yeye sana kabisa. When we trust in Jesus and follow Him. Wakati tu na mimi yesu na tumfuata. He is very happy with us. Ah, yeye na kwa fura yeye sana kabisa. And he will quiet us with his love. Na 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 kwa na rumbwa amuri yake kwetu. That means he will make us feel comfortable with his love. Na na pele sikuwe comfortable biti ya kupendo wake. And you sometimes carry your baby when they was your baby is young. Ah, uh, ina ina kuchikia wakati mto tuwa kuto changa unamkamata. And you want to make the baby quiet. Na una penda mto tuto atuliye kabisa. You want to make the baby feel loved. Ah, uh, una penda mto tuto aski kama una penda. Una penda. So that is how God works in us to make us feel His love. Ah, uh, wakati ah, uh, sasa iku mungu mungu ana kisi mungu ana tu penda ili sisi tu siki e upendo wa kwe. He always want to comfort us with his love. Okay. 
And then it says that he rejoices over us with singing. Now rejoice over us singing. With singing is like this. Wow, I'm so happy to see you. He's so happy. He sings over us. I am happy to see you. I love you. Now this verse tells us that God loves us with feelings. Now when your child is small, usually they love you with feelings. When your child is small, when they see you, they will come to you, I'm so happy. Do you find it that way? Yes. They're so happy. But when they grow up, sometimes they're not so happy to see you. If you buy them a gift, they will be very happy. But normally they would not be like a little child happy But let me tell you, God is very happy to see you every time. I hope you have this confidence. Whenever you love God, God is very, very happy. Do remember Jesus said this? If you give a cup of cold water to a little one, by no means you lose the reward. Sorry. If you give a cup of cold water to a little one, yeah. by no means you lose the reward. Uh, yeah. So, what Jesus said is this. Now, to give a cup of cold water, is this easy or hard? Uh, it's easy. Yeah. But Jesus is saying, even if you do a little thing for me, I'm very happy. Have you noticed that Jesus did not say, if you build a big church and I'll be happy with you? But Jesus said, even when you give a cup of cold water to a little one, to a little one, not an important person, a little person, I will be happy with you and I'll reward you. Can you see that it's easy to make God happy? Yes? Whenever we have a pure heart to love God, whenever we want to do something for God, whenever we worship Him, He will be very, very happy. And I told people many times, if you have a pure heart to follow God and love God, God is not like people. God is happy with us easily. Of course, if we know that if we give a cup of cold water, God is happy, I want to do more than giving a cup of cold water. But this Bible verse tells us a big difference between men and God. Have you noticed when you serve God? 
umetambua mara mara moja kama una kuna mara umetambua yes when we serve God au wakati tunamtumikia Mungu sometimes we do many things kuna mara tunafanya mambo mengi mengi we work very hard tunatumika kwa nguvu kwa nguvu sana there might be something we do not do so well kuna kwa kitu ambacho tunafanya vizuri but there are many things we work very hard na lakini kuna But people don't see these good things we have done. People will say you have not done this other things. Have you noticed that? People always look at what you have not done. That is why sometimes people give us pressure, right? And also we are like that too. If someone serves God with us, when someone serves God with us, we don't see the good things they've done. We'll say, he understand I know he has done something good. But we also have, also have always have a tendency to tell them what they have not done. Does it make people feel good? When people just tell you what you have not done, does it make you feel good? No. That is why I'm saying people live in the law. God has unlimited love and grace. He is happy with anything we have done for him. He remembers every good thing we have done for him. And he wants to reward us richly. It's easy to please God. Ni ni vizuri ni ni raisi kumpendeza Mungu. And then I hope that the love of God compels you, motivates you. And I'm going to be that ujazwe na na ile upendo wa Mungu kukutia nguvu. Then we know that God is so happy when I do any little things for him. Na wakati wakati unajua hata kama unafanya kitu chache kidogo kwa Mungu Mungu anafurahia. Then I'm motivated to do more things for God. Na sasa kiko motivated kwa kufanya vitu na vitu kwa Mungu. And every time we do something, na kila mara ambapo tunafanya kitu, we can say in our heart. Na tunaweza sema katika mioyo yetu, God is very happy with me. Na Mungu anafurahishwa nami. God loves me. Mungu ananipenda. Whatever I do for him. Kila kitu ambacho tunafanya kwake, he's happy with me. Ah, ananifurahishwa nami. And he's blessing me. Na ananibariki. Let me tell you. Acha nikwambie. This belief that God is loving us and is happy with us. Ah, uh, hii kuamini kwa Mungu anafurahishwa na anafurahishwa nasi. We take away our pressure. Itatosha pressure ndani yetu and give us motivation motivation and help us to enjoy God all the time that our life can be enjoyable Sorry. our life can be enjoyable I can enjoy God yes Jesus loves me ndio Yesu ananipenda Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The whole Bible tells me so. Do you live in the love of God? Or do you live under pressure? It makes a lot of difference. Now, when we talk to people, do we say words of appreciating them? Or do we have a tendency to say, you have not loved God enough? Do we have a tendency to use the law? 
To say to people you do not love God enough. You do not obey God enough. It's very easy for us also to motivate people with the law. And to that we motivate people, you know, push them to do better. And give people pressure. What happened is you have a church of pressure. Instead of a church of joy and freedom. That if the church is full of the joy and the love of God, everyone will say, God is loving me. God is blessing me. Everything I do for God, God is very happy. And He'll reward me. Now, if everybody is like that, your church is full of energy and joy and love. Do you want your church to be like that? Yes. yes. Now, first, the first thing, people will say, how can I see the love of God? So I'll give you five areas. Please write this down. Five areas we can see and experience God's love. First, from nature, we can see the love of God. Uh, well, water. water is created by God. Water is created by God. When you drink water, does it feel good? Ah, uh, what, what? Do you feel good when you drink water? Ah, when I sit here, you feel good when you drink Yes. Indeed. Yes. It's created by God. Ile ime ungu na mungu. Amen. When you close your eyes now for a moment, close your eyes and relax. Ah, usun usun amecho na u na u relax se kumu. And take a few. Deep breaths. Now, Take a few deep breaths. Relax. 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 Do you feel good? Do you yeah. feel good? God has made a body so that we will feel good when we relax. Do you feel good when you sleep? Do you feel good when you sleep? You like sleeping? You like to sleep now? No. no. <laughs> but sleeping makes you feel good, right? Yeah. Do you like to eat? Do you like to eat? Yeah, it says much. Yes. Okay. So what I'm saying is, we can see God's love in nature. Everywhere. We can see the love of fathers and mothers. Where do this love come from? It all came from the love of God. He created human with love for the children. And he created dogs and cats and animals of love for the children. So we can see God's love in nature. And also look at your body. Can you see me clearly? Can you see me clearly? Can you see color? Can you see different colors? So God created our eyes so we can see colors. God creates our hands so we can feel. Yeah, And we can touch people and make people feel good. So this is God's love in nature. Amen. So every time you eat, you say, I can taste God's 
creation of food. Ah, mimi wakati mara na mtu anasema anaweza kuangalia upendo wa Mungu wa kuumba chakula. Okay? Yeah. The second area we can see God's love. Ah, jambo la pili ambalo tunaweza kusaidia kuona upendo wa Mungu is in Jesus dying on the cross. Ni yale Mungu amekufa kwa msalaba. The Son of God enjoys heaven very much. But he came on earth and then he was tortured and killed by the people. And he has to stand as punishment of God the Father. The Bible says he became sin for us. And the Bible says he became cursed for us. That is why Jesus was afraid to go to the cross. Because he has to face the punishment of God, the sin and the curse of God. He was separated from God the Father on the cross. It's a great love of Jesus Christ. He loves each one of us. So every day we can say, we can say, Jesus loves me so much in time. Hallelujah. And number three, we can see God's love in nature. I mean, no, I'm sorry, in the Bible. The Bible tells many Bible verses about His love. And they are all real. Just now we read that God is in front of you and behind you and His lady is here behind you. And God is doing that. Because we found God moving in our heart when we sin. And we the joy and love of God when we praise Him. So we see that the promise in the Bible is real. And the fourth area that we can experience God when we worship Him. When we love Him. When we pray to Him. When we read the Bible. So when we relate to God. We can experience God's love. Now even now, can you try a little bit? We just say to Jesus, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I want you. Jesus, I want you. Jesus, I appreciate you. Father, I need you. Baba, I need you. Father, I love you. Baba, I love you. Father, I want to obey you. Baba, I want to obey you. Do you feel peace? Do you feel peace? Do you feel peace? Yes. Yes. So, every time we come to God, we can experience His love. And number five, we can experience God. In our daily life. In a difficult situation. Let me tell you. Three times I almost lost my life in car accident. But you know, I, none of them became a car accident. One time I was driving on high speed on freeway at night. And then there was a place there was some ice I did not see because there was no ice elsewhere. But there was some ice on some one spot. 
And then my car spit. And moved from one lane to another lane and then to the partition. And then a truck passed on me immediately. If my spin was a little later, I would have been killed by the truck right away. And I put that in my memory. I thank God you saved my life. Oh, na yeye ni tega tega mi wangu na shukuru mungu kwa kuniyoko asikuini. At one time I was passing a car on a you know on a freeway that we are facing each other. Ya, na ni mi kwa na tembe ya tu na kuni wangu na una na hizi sikuomba. And then when I passed. The car in front of me was so close to me. You know, I thought I could hit the car. And we are going to die. But what happened was, you know, suddenly, I don't know how, the car went away, you know, because I could not move back to my lane, and I have no choice. But then suddenly the car has a way to move away. If not, I would have died already. I've seen God's help in my life so many times. One time I came to Africa. When I, you know, there was I wait for a second plane. I, I came to a, a one place and then I wait for a second plane. And I lost track of the time. I lost track of the time. Yeah. Alipoteza kale kaji karatasi kaliko kuwa na munda. Yeah, alipoteza kale kaji kaji karatasi ya. And then when I discovered the plane, my plane has left already. So pasi ni diona indege miniacha. And then, you know, I I went to the person and say, went to the counter and say, I'm supposed to be on that plane. Ah, na kena kwa kumuja kwa mene, ni nipasha kwa 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 indege hiyo. And then the person said, well, the plane has left, you have to rebook your ticket. And I went to the rebooking counter, and they said it's very difficult. Because I booked the ticket in Hong Kong. And and the person said, there is no way I can help you. And I pray to God, Lord, you are almighty. You can do everything. You can do everything. And then I, I you know, went up to the counter. And I said to the person, can you make a phone call again to find out? If you can help me with this problem. And then the person made a phone call. And when she made a phone call, her eyes and mouth were wide open. She had a look of surprise. She said, the plane has come back, has not been able to take off. And I asked the people inside the plane what has happened. She said the plane just could not take off. So it returned. So I could get on the plane again. So I'm telling you. 
God is Almighty. Amen. He can help us in our daily life. When you seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, all these things will be added to us. Sorry. All these things will be added to us. Amen. God loves us very, very much. And He can bless us in many, many ways. So every day we can enjoy His love. We are motivated by His love. Now I'm gonna, we are gonna have a short break. Here, right? Yeah, we'll have a short break. But during the short break, anyone, because there are so many of you, anyone you like me to pray for you, I can pray for you to experience the peace and the comfort of God. To help you realize God's love is available for all of us. If we pray with an open heart, and say, God loves me. Unasema, God is happy with me. Mungu God wants to bless me. Ah, Mungu Whenever I pray to Him with a sincere heart, God is very happy. Mungu and He will respond to us. Now in the next section, I will talk about how we can apply it to our life and our ministry. And then later we might have a short quiz, a test, to ask you to say, you know, to, uh, to answer some questions about the so if you pay attention, then you'll be able to answer the questions. Okay. So during this time, anyone who likes to have a short break and anyone who likes me to pray for you, I can come out here.